guys, Ron here, and once again I invited 9 other Poketubers and together we created our own Pokemon. Each individual YouTuber gave me an attribute for the Pokemon, like its type, stats, environment, color scheme, etc. without knowing the other attributes that were chosen. So for example, one Poketuber can give me the type combination of like Bug Rock, and another Poketuber can give me the body shape of an elephant, which at first glance makes no sense. But it was my job to take all these random attributes and make them work into a new Pokemon. I've done this three times before, so check out the first three episodes if you haven't, because honestly this specific episode has the most interesting combination of attributes. In previous episodes they were astonishingly cohesive, but this time I really had to stretch my creative muscles. Now remember, in this video you'll see the various traits that each Poketuber picked, and then their genuine reaction to the two Pokemon I made using their set of two attributes. If you're new here, I make a ton of videos where I create my own Fakemon, a lot of times with fun challenges and twists like turning cartoon or video game characters into Pokemon, so make sure to subscribe to check them out. Now let's begin with the first first fake mon I made. In order to understand how we made this fake mon, here's a quick rundown of all 9 attributes that my friends provided. They are height, ability, color scheme, body shape, power, environment, type, personality, and of course, stats. This is basically the order in which all the Poketubers responded. After I told each Poketuber which attribute they were in charge of, Tobin responded first. So for the first Pokemon, I decided to make it 5'7 because... I'm 5'7", and I think it's a pretty good height. I think it's average. I, I, it's a good height. I'm going to be honest. This could be good. This could be bad. I don't know. This is the first attribute. So let's go even further with Patters, who chose the ability for the first Mon. So the first ability that I chose for the Pokemon was Earth Eater, because I think it would just be funny to have some random creature eat some dirt. It could be a worm. Uh, would you still love this Pokemon if it were a worm? Hopefully it gets a type that is weak to ground though. But this Pokemon could be anything, so the colors that Pulse Effects gives us could lead us in any direction. So for the first Pokemon, I decided to go with the color blue, brown, white, and pink. I, I think I was thinking to myself, what could possibly be the hardest color combination to make something that just pops? The brown is giving me Earth Eater, but it's definitely hard to make a Pokemon appealing with brown. Unless it's really cute. I mean, like, what, centred? Since it's John's turn to pick a body type, hopefully it brings the height and colors together. The attribute I was given was body type, and that was incredibly easy, as I want to see a frog-like body. Why do I want to see a frog-like body? I like frogs. Sometimes it's an easy answer. PM7 chose a frog? What? What? Who could have known? I am completely flabbergasted. Frog is perfect because they can be any color, and obviously frogs in the Pokemon world can be human sized. They're very much associated with mud, so Earth Eater ain't, ain't too bad. Hopefully the power that Game Boy Luke chose will aid in it uh, eating dirt. Okay, so the attribute I chose for the first Pokemon was, uh, I had an idea for teleportation, but I know that might sort of like lock it into sort of like a psychic type, and obviously I don't know what everyone else has chose. So I kind of went with moving so quickly that it looks like it's teleporting. Uh, fast Pokemon are cool. Um, moving quick looks sick. Uh, and I've always been a big fan of anime, uh, like, you know, Dragon Ball, or even just like uh, other like shows with like a lot of fighting in it, like Naruto and stuff like that, where people like move so quickly that it looks like they're teleporting, right? And I understand that if the stat distribution doesn't account for uh, fast Pokemon, this might not look so good, but hey, we're gonna roll with that. We're gonna see if it works, so. <laughs> Yeah, since teleportation only works with the psychic type, hopefully we're looking at a fast mon who can simply vanish quickly. But where are they going? It's Hoops and Hip Hop's turn to give me an environment. And the environment that I decided to go with is mountain. The reason why I chose that is because in real life, mountains are my favorite biome slash landscape. I think they're really cool. And I also think they make for some really cool Pokemon too. So I think there's a lot of potential there. So it hops from mountain to mountain, eating dirt. It's finally time for Asteroid Videos to give us the type of this Pokemon. Please make sense. Hi, uh, so for the first Pokemon, I decided to do Ice and Steel as the typing because, I mean, honestly, it's just a cool typing. You've got like the fragility of ice with the hardness of steel. This actually works quite well. While frogs are very much not associated with the cold, an ice steel type could live in the cold mountains. I mean, they would, 100%. And now we have an actual reason for it to eat dirt. What if the metals in the dirt help fortify the steel that it has on its body? Hopefully the personality that Real Breaking Nate gives to this Pokemon would be that of a Pokemon who is eager to eat dirt. Hey everyone, I'm Real Breaking Nate, and the attribute that I chose for the first one is simple, but loves life. 
so excited it can't sleep. And the reason why I picked that one is because it's it's kind of mimicking me a little bit there. I mean, sure, a happy frog sounds delightful, honestly, and the food it eats energizes it and keeps it awake. Now it all comes down to stats. I obviously gave that job to Aaron Cybertron Zhang. So the attribute that I chose for the first Pokemon was the overall base stat total. And as a competitive VGC player, I wanted to make sure that this would be something that had a good base stat total and could be viable in competitive play. The idea is something that is really bulky and fairly fast, but can't necessarily deal massive amounts of damage. We need it to be fast in order for it to teleport. Teleport. But also bulky enough to believably be steel. Uh, this is perfect, Don. <laughs> this is really perfect. I think this is the least problematic set of attributes we've had in this series. Let's just make the thing. Okay, since John gave us a pretty straightforward body shape, it wasn't tough coming up with the basics. A happy frog face and body. I want to make it somewhat round so it looks kind of like a snowball, but not too circular so it looks fast enough to vanish instantly. Bulbous arms that'll be covered in metal and excited eyes, which were easy to implement since some frogs have these exact pupils. Warts made of metals that it has consumed. These protect it. Two on the side of its head to look like the tympanum of a frog, but also like earmuffs since the dude is cold. Many frogs have neat patterns, and for a Pokemon with a huge base stat total, it can't just be completely white. I need some added flair. I had this idea to make it so that the rest of the body is also covered in metals that creep up from the ends of its limbs and form these iron bubbles you see in the center. But right now it looks too simple, and there are way too many circular elements and no lack of contrast, so I made them square like actual metals. But they conflicted too much, so I made them look more fluid. I gave it the colors of snow, like Pulse wanted, pink for the tongue, blue for the eyes, and brown for the metal. It's a dirty, rusted metal, but I did my best trying to hide the fact that it's brown while still technically being brown. I think these black patterns bordering the metal on the limbs actually help separate the elements because it was beginning to look too light and soft colored. I needed something dark to make things pop. One stripe on the face even alludes to the earmuffs it has. But before showing you the final design, how about we see the reaction of all the other Poketubers as they check out all the attributes for the first time? Tobin picked five foot seven. Yeah, about his height. That makes sense. Respectable height. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Pretty big frog. I love that. It's funny thinking that I'm equally as tall as this Pokemon. Patters with the ability Earth Eater. That sounds made up, but I'm not 100% sure. Also, it's like ground absorb. That's interesting. Yeah, for an ice steel type, that's amazing. Yo, I am so down for Earth Eater. That is such a good freaking ability. I love it. I'm loving it. Not the best meal, but you know, what are you gonna do? We've got blue, brown, white, and pink for the colors. That's actually so crazy. Cause I have brown hair. Kind of reminds me of ice cream, like Neapolitan ice cream, except for the blue. Of course it's frog-like if it's from PM7. PM7 picked frog -like. Of course he did. I could have told you that, honestly. <laughs> That's a scary frog. A 5-7 frog coming at you. Ooh, you better watch out. You better watch out. Power teleportation. Wait a minute. It can eat dirt anywhere. Gotta love teleportation, right? Can you imagine not having to buy a uh, airplane ticket? Lives in the mountains. Perfect place for dirt. I like the beach more. more of a beach guy myself, but hey, mountains are pretty cool. Uh, I don't necessarily want to be in a mountain. I'm seeing how these would affect me personally, which I know I shouldn't be doing, but uh, I can't help it. Asteroid Freaky, my boy, gave it the ice steel type. Ooh, so he's going to be really weak to fighting. Ice steel type, that'll go well with mountain. If he's a steel type, does he have weapon or tough or like long claws? And uh, this personality description is adorable. It loves life. It's so excited that it can't sleep. I like that. He's a good guy. He's feeling good. It should love life. Frogs are great. It's got a great life. It's a frog. We all need to strive to be like that sometimes. Sometimes it's hard to just get up in the morning. So excited can't sleep because then I'll be able to wake up and eat some more dirt. And it's pretty good stats as well. We have some pretty bulky stats from Cybertron. He's not much of a fighter, uh, more of a lover. Anytime I see the number 100, I feel good. It's also 560 base set total, so that's near pseudo legendary level. So this guy should be pretty strong. So to make him look bulky and fast, I think is gonna be, that seems tough, but I'm sure it'll work out. I mean, is it gonna look cute? It can't look cute. There's no way. Say hi to the cute Ampharum from Amphibian and Ferum, the Latin word for iron. This eager Pokemon jumps from mountain to mountain, merrily feeding on rare minerals. The metals found in their diet are absorbed into their skin, replenishing the defense of their iron warts. When spotted, they instantly summon a snowstorm and vanish. I'm really excited to see this. So glad you gave me body type. All right, let's see the frog. It's so happy. I love it. Yes. Oh, wow. He's kind of cute in, in a weird way. Oh, 
Oh, look at him. He's so happy. Oh, that's so lovely. Look at it. You know, he's a cute boy. Oh, that's actually so cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. I, yeah, I like this a lot, actually. Yo, okay, so it is a frog. Oh, okay. Oh, he's like, yeah, he's a little toad. He's a little toad guy. I love that. Oh, that's so cute. Oh, okay. Oh, wait, this is actually really good. <laughs> Dude, he's just a goofy little guy. He's such a strong, happy boy. Got some good energy. That's awesome. That's so good. Oh, yeah, he's so happy and excited. I, he's so gr Wow, he's huge, though. Holy shit. And he's 5'7", which is fine. I wouldn't want to hug this guy. Let's just be honest. I'm not going to want to hug him. There's probably a gym, not like a battling gym, but like a workout gym, on the top of the mountain, like the very top where it just kind of like hangs out uh, and it's probably been lifting. If I were to look at this, I'm not sure if I would think it was super offensive or super defensive. And this thing's obviously, I meant for it to be quite bulky, but also a little bit fast. But I, I think it, it fits it perfectly, honestly. He looks fast because like frogs are inherently fast, but he also, you know, has those armor-ish type plates on him that I think makes the, the defense make sense. With Terra and with the speed and defenses, I think it has uh, some interesting capabilities. It's not something that's going to be beating anybody up, but, you know, on, on the other side of things, uh, no one should be trying to beat this guy up. But what it's mean, and two, it's not going to work out too well for you. I could so picture this guy just rolling around on the ground, scooping some dirt into its mouth. I'm amazed at how real this looks, honestly. Like, I love it. The, oh, uh, there's a shiny on here. And then with the shiny, he changes to be a little bit more steel-like. I like the yellow eyes. The yellow eyes freaking pop. I'm a little disappointed in the shiny. Uh, I wish it was a little bit more vibrant. He kind of reminds me of just Jiraiya from Naruto. I'm a big nerd. I'm kind of shocked. I feel like everything went together so perfectly. I'm a big fan. Let's go ahead and read the Pokedex entry. This eager Pokemon jumps from mountain to mountain, merrily feeding on rare minerals. The metals uh, found in their diet are absorbed into their skin, replenishing their defense of their iron warts. Oh, so those are warts. Oh, okay. I love that. Fits right into the defensive capabilities. When spotted, they instantly summon a snowstorm and vanish. That works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, okay, he's not like psychically teleporting. It's like, you think you've seen something, gone. You jump to the other one, gone. Jump to the other one. I love that. It just works. I'm, I'm very happy about that. So I would 100% not like somebody summoning snow and then just ghosting me, okay? That's kind of cool. I like it. It's mysterious. That's so cute. I love him. He's wonderful. I'm going to be sad when the second fake mon's not a frog, but you know. This worked out so well. I love it when the plan comes together. I give this one a 9 out of 10. I fucking love this, Ron. Excuse my French. I really love it. It's so happy. It makes me happy. Out of any fake mon in this series, this definitely feels like the most realistic. Nothing is forced to comply with the attributes, and it generally feels like a friend. And I mean, that's the most important thing in a Pokemon, honestly. Let's start making fake mon number two. Uh, can we have two complete successes in one video? Let's find out. With short-tempered in charge of power, I'm sure we can't go wrong. The tribute I decided to give the next mon is that its mood can affect the weather. My fiance helped me with this one because I'm very moody. As you can tell, the name's short-tempered. So I thought it'd be fun to have a, a mon that's very moody, that affects the weather, so he's mad, like maybe thunderstorms, sad, maybe rain, I don't know, something like that kind of sounds fun. I can't say there's any problem with this. I, I think we can make any type have this power. But will the colors match the powers? That's up for Patters to decide. For the second Pokemon, I chose purple, blue, black, and yellow for the colors. I, had, I know nothing about colors, so I just used my favorites. <laughs> Once again, we're getting the colors early, so there's no problem. So for now, you're safe, Patters. For now. Pulse Effects is up with the height. For the second Pokemon, I chose a height of 9'6". I was thinking to myself, you know, I just wanted like some tall, larger than life boy. That's a very big boy. Hopefully this Pokemon has some serious base stats and does not have the body of a bee. For now, PM7 is going to give us the ability to finally flesh out this Pokemon. I decided to go with Wonder Guard as it's a really, really cool ability and you don't get to see it on really any other Pokemon but Shininja. So I was interested to see how Ron would implement this into a new Pokemon. I kind of knew this was going to eventually happen sometime in the series. So it can only be damaged by super effective moves. Hopefully this Pokemon will have some spiritual powers or some kind of physical element that protects it. All I know is that if it has more than one HP, this Pokemon will be broken. What's Game Boy Luke cooking? 
I guess I kind of just made something that I, I know I would like. And I also just gave it funky numbers because funky numbers are fun. But I made it like a very fast special attacker. I think they're some of the most fun Pokemon to use. Like who doesn't like uh, a quick Pokemon that you can send out and do damage with like off rip. Like that's, it's just, you know. Honestly, I love this exact type of stat distribution in my Pokemon. So I'm totally down. Oops and Hip Hop is in charge of the body type. Please give us something that would look like a fast special attacker. The first thing that popped into my head for whatever reason when True Green put me in charge of this was a Kaiju body style, kind of like Agron or Tyranitar or Nidoking or Baxcalibur, basically the Godzilla-like Pokemon. That was kind of just what I wanted to see, I guess. I personally love this type of body shape for a Pokemon. It's very nostalgic since it's basically the default Pokemon body type for some of the first Pokemon ever designed, like Rhydon. But these are usually slow physical attackers, so perhaps I make it a more slender lizard? But since my dude's thinking Godzilla, an atomic breath is in line with the special attacker, especially a monster that can summon weather. I just want Frank to give us a personality that fits a kaiju, which will be tough since their personality is usually just brutish and monstrous. Monstrous is not a word. For the personality, I said I wanted him to look super smart, but on the inside, deep down, he's actually dumb as bricks. That was my suggestion. I want it to be like a facade, right? Like he like wants everybody to think he's smart. This is super interesting because at first I thought this was too intricate of a personality for a kaiju, but then I realized this Pokemon could be like a false deity, some kind of Pokemon that people in the past would worship for controlling the weather. But in reality, it doesn't know how its powers work and the weather it conjures is just dependent on its mood. Maybe a false legendary Pokemon, since its stats aren't that high for such a powerful Pokemon anyways. Maybe something like Volcarona that was worshipped but isn't legendary. Please give me Dragon type Nate. I ended up picking Fairy and Ground, and the reason why I went with Fairy and Ground is because there's not a Fairy and Ground as of right now. They almost, in a way, seem like opposites a little bit. No, they aren't. But that is the opposite of what a Kaiju usually is. However, I can use this to my advantage. What if it's based on fertility and agricultural gods that bring crops by controlling the weather? That's very much a fairy type and even ground type thing. So then how do I make it look like a draconic kaiju? I'll give it a shell made of sand that makes it look like other legendary dragon types. It's just a front, a facade, like its personality. This sand armor that it has will also be the wonder guard protecting it. Now this is a very specific reference, but think Gara's sand from Naruto. Now all I need is an environment that a ground type would live in and we're all good. I decided to pick in the Mesosphere, which is just above our stratosphere. I wanted something that was kind of space-esque and was not necessarily easy to find within, you know, regular terrains. The literal sky is the opposite of what I want. How do I make a Godzilla Pokemon that lives in the sky? I guess it just floats using its sand and fairy powers? It's pretty much sentient sand. But god, do I have to make it way skinnier than I imagined in order for it to believably look like the kind of dragon that would fly without any wings, like Asian dragons from the east. I'm going to take a lot of inspiration from various fertility, harvest, and storm gods that were worshipped in the past, like Baal and Freyr, many of which have horns that I will use for my fake mon. I'll take the flowing robes of Inari and Susano from Japanese mythology too, and the colors and body of the Rainbow Serpent, a god of indigenous Australians, and basically make a horned, wispy, flying serpent. So it's going to be more of a serpent-like kaiju, since it has the ability to fly in the air, believably look fast and, well, not a physical attacker. It can't be bulky like Godzilla. It'll have horns like all the gods that inspired it. But the biggest problem is trying to make it not look like a dragon type. So instead of straight up wings and horns, it'll have these ethereal wisps. It's made of sand and fairy energy, so it's really just earth in the shape of a dragon. Its horn is what gives it weather abilities, like a lightning rod or weather stick. It's looking smug, but in reality, it's just faking it until it's making it. The body is modeled after a bunch of dragon type legendary Pokemon like Zekrom, Palkia, and Rayquaza shortening it so it looks a bit more kaiju-like and adding patterns that look more like earth cracks and layers of colored sand. This is also inspired by the rainbow serpent, but some of the cracks even allude to Rayquaza and Zygarde's patterns. Some spikes made of hard earth, you know, a rock, but I can't say that since he's not a rock type. This way it looks more like Godzilla. The earth covering its body is basically its wonder guard, the colors I was given, but in a way that alludes to earth and fairy type. The final design will be a bit stouter though. But once again, let's check out the other's reaction to the uh, attributes before I show them the final product. Its mood affects the weather. That's cool, Tobin. I feel like that already is perfect. See, for me, the weather affects my mood, so I'm, I'm, I'm relating here. Uh, Patters decided to give it the color 
purple, yellow, blue, and black. Black is a great, like, either base color or an accent color to a Pokemon. Nine, six. Whoa, okay, that's that's tall. That goes good with Kaiju. Big. Yeah, he's mad. That's a man. This guy's almost as tall as a basketball hoop. And John made it have Wonder Guard. This is about to be the most broken Pokemon in the entire world. I like how different uh, my stature distribution was from Game Boy Luke's, even though our overall total was actually really close. A little bit on the squishier side, but not too squishy. That is really unique. And oh my God, that's super broken for Wonder Guard. I forgot about that. <laughs> Wait a second. Uh, special attack is 121. Ooh, with weather effects? That's insane, dude. It's it's body is a kaiju. This is going to look sick, isn't it? Uh, and I know like three meters is, is like a baby kaiju. <laughs> it's, it's not the most massive thing in the world, but like, listen. What signifies a kaiju? Like, how tall do you have to be? What's the base minimum? I feel like that's a pretty, like, big grouping of body types. Like, there's a bunch of different kaiju, right? This doesn't seem nearly as cohesive as the first one, but I'm sure there's some way we could bring this together. Pretends to be smart, but is dumb. <laughs> so me. <laughs> I know a few people like that. I'm the smart guy. Listen, my decision is the best decision, but actually like a whole plan falls through and it's just like, yeah, I, li I, I like that. Ground typing, I think is uh, pretty funny given where this environment is. Wait, this thing has no weaknesses. <laughs> Wait, no, 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 it does. Never mind, never mind. I, I read that wrong. So it's weak to steel, water, grass, and ice. Um, so Wonder Guard's not too broken on it, but still really fun. Its environment is the mesosphere above stratosphere. Okay, doing that with a ground type is insane. Oh, that's going to be hard. This is like a legendary. And I love that you included above the stratosphere because I probably would have not known <laughs> where that's at. Yeah, I was gonna say, you had to get specific with me because again, I'm not smart. Don't know where the heck that is. I just know it's in the air or in the sky. <laughs> they, they could be um, mythical in a sense that kind of makes sense for them to be above the, the stratosphere, right? That, that makes sense. And the colors go well with that, I think. I don't know what this is gonna look like. There's uh, so many different things. I'm thinking of Power Rangers this whole time, just since you mentioned Kaiju. Here is Dea Storm the false legendary Pokemon from Deus, meaning God or deity, and Storm. This nature spirit surrounds itself in a protective sand facade that takes the shape of a powerful dragon. It has the ability to change the weather and was worshipped as an agricultural sky god. In reality, Deus Storm cannot control its powers and pretends as if the rain it conjures is intentional. All right, let's take a look. Oh my God, this one's so cool. Whoa. Yep, this thing looks sick. Oh, that is really cool. Oh, that is so, that's actually so sick. Okay, I feel like I can vibe with this. No, okay, no, you know what? He's cool looking, I love him. Like the design is sick. Okay, I'm liking this. Oh, wow. Oh, that's a cool looking dragon. That is a smug boy. He just looks like a way cooler Tyranitar, in my opinion. Dewstorm. Dew... Dewstorm? All right, we have Dewstorm. Or Dewstorm. Day... Deus Storm. I'm stupid. It's pronounced Dea Storm. <laughs> I love how it's built in. Hmm. I am very smart. Nobody will guess that I'm a big dumb idiot. But he's just... He looks cocky, which is good. That that was honestly... That was part of it. In my head, that's the exact pose I could I could imagine it having. Sort of like this... Yes, actually, I am I am pretty smart. You know, I know what I'm talking about, but actually, I'm a little bit stupid on the inside. It looks a bit like a genie. I don't know why I feel like that. It looks a bit like a genie, though. This does really feel like something you would find in kind of space, right? This looks like it could be like a legendary. I'm wondering if it has something to do with Rayquaza because it lives in the stratosphere, which is kind of by the ozone layer. It looks a little bit like um, Maridon or Coridon. If I saw this thing in the wild, catching it. Throwing my, I'm throwing my Master Ball. I don't care if it's a legend or not. It's a false legendary. Interesting. Oh, I love that even more, Ron. Wow. Oh, it, it does say legendary. False legendary. Okay, so we're on the same page here. And it said the false legendary. That's so sick. Yes. Oh, my God. Listen, I, I love doing these because I really do see these Pokemon being added to, like, the actual game. It's so sick. I want him to be real. Be real, please. And if we were playing competitive in Scarlet and Violet with the ability to tear as well, uh, that it seems like it could legitimately break the game. <laughs> I feel like Fairy and Ground have some really good special attacks. Actually, like Moonblast, Earth Power, you know, stuff like that. This guy is a menace. 
Unless you can trick it, because of course, it is actually very dumb. Amazing. And the shiny? Oh, mwah. Amazing. Perfect. I love the shiny form even better than the regular form. That is definitely a Pokemon that I would shiny hunt. Th this thing's really cool though. Let's read its dex entry. This nature spirit surrounds itself in a protective sand facade that mimics the shape of a powerful dragon. Oh, wait, what? Oh, there's lore. Sand facade? That's what I said. That's what I said. I need it. We needed it to be facade. Cool. It has the ability to change the weather and was worshipped as an agricultural sky god. In reality, Dea Storm cannot fully control its powers and pretends as if the rain it conjures is intentional. Oh, because it's based on his mood. Yeah, I get it. That's cool. It's a bit of a fraud. And you know what? We do a little lying sometimes as a treat. Sometimes you just got to fake it till you make it, you know? Um, I feel like if you had like a really silly ability, something like Truant, for example, um, it would kind of match the personality type of this a little bit more. I would give this a 9.5 out of 10. That's so cool. I love this. This is so, it's such cool lore. Why can't you just be real, please? Well, I don't know how Ron can cohesively puts all this stuff and just makes it work. This is perfect. I love it so much. He's managed to take our random conglomerates of nonsense and silliness and make it a viable, cool thing that could exist. Thank you so much, everybody, for uh, including me in this. This was really, really fun to do. Good job, guys. I think we smashed it. This was amazing. I think this is by far the most successful batch in the series. They don't look like a mismatch of different attributes, but rather like deliberate concepts that were developed by one person. I hope you guys enjoyed this enough to want a part five. Leave a like and subscribe if you do. Check out my other fake mon creation videos and check the description for the links to these lovely YouTubers. And consider becoming a patron or clicking the join button to get cool rewards like seeing my videos days early and a huge discount on the t-shirts I made for you guys. Follow me on Twitter where I post sneak peeks and final art of these Pokemon too. Bye.